One of the good questions that we often ask ourselves is, all those weightlifters, Olympic weightlifters, you know, they're so strong, they're so good. And, uh, and we're saying these things, the lifting weights should come later, right? Why is that? So I'm gonna show you a clip today of how Chinese Olympic weightlifters are selected. So this way you have a better understanding of holistic performance and versus a, a weightlifting induced performance. There's a lot of strength coaches, you know, they're not very honest about their intentions, but what they're trying to show you is that they show you a weightlifter or maybe an Olympic weightlifter. And afterwards, after their lift, they do a vertical jump. That vertical jump is much higher, right? It's, or, or they show you, oh, look at this guy. This guy's vertical is so great. You can, if you lift X amount of weight, you're gonna be like this guy too. Well, unfortunately, that's not correct. How these elite weightlifters, Olympic weightlifters are selected is actually through glutes dominance when they're much younger. Especially, you know, considering China is one of the top nations in producing the best Olympic weightlifters in the world. So when they are, for example, 13 years old, 12 years old, or even 10 years old, you know, there's people that are going to come to the school and then they will evaluate uh, the kids. And what they're me actually measuring and they're actually trying to gouge is goose dominance. So they will have people do, for example, broad jumps. They will have people, for example, do a few hops and they will actually palpate the glutes and look at the glutes to see if that person has a natural glutes development. Now, from what our fascial research, from our data, it's pretty clear if, if, the, if the young kids around nine or 10 and then their foot to glutes hyperarch fascial connection is good, you know, when you palpate the glutes, you will feel very different. It, it will feel completely different than someone or some kids who haven't developed this uh, hyperarch myofascial connection from the foot to the glutes. When you take these kids who are more holistically connected, who are more fascial driven, who are more athletic, and have them do a bunch of uh, Olympic weightlifting training, of course, you're gonna get good results. By the time that they go to uh, higher level competitions, if they're injured, they simply can't lift, right? So that also shows that your myofascial connection has to be very strong. And if you're injured, that shows that you have inefficiencies in your system. You have dysfunctions in your system, right? And if you don't heal properly and your fascia doesn't heal properly, guess what? You're gonna have chronic pain. A lot of the athletes towards the end of the, or in the middle of their preparation for higher level competitions, they couldn't go anymore. Not because they don't want to, it's because their body actually gave up and they, they couldn't find a solution for it. But now with our research, with this data, we can resurrect, resurrect a lot of these people's careers. That's what I'm very excited about. The fascia research is still ongoing. In late July, I would be going to Colorado to meet up with Dr. Steckhoff and we're going to do more dissections. The other day I was talking to someone and they said, oh, 22 kilos sounds a lot. Like, that's like 50 pounds almost. I said, yeah, that's how significant it is. And then from his limited understanding and he thinks, oh, the, the fascia is the skin. He's like, how can skin be that, that, that heavy? I'm like, no, 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 no. Fascia is not just the skin. You cut the skin, you will see fat and fascia right away. And there are multiple layers. Let's think about onion. So many layers, right, inside. Those are all fascia fascia compartments and it's transparent it's invisible uh, and it integrates everything almost like a cement but this cement has very different properties and which makes it really powerful and dynamic and think about this again when you look at all the Olympic lifters jumping high you have to understand what comes first was it 
because they're fossil driven first that's how they're selected or because oh you know what he just lifted weights for many many years and become like what they are today i'll tell you a funny story when i was younger why what comes first matters to me so i my my brains built a little differently than i guess average people so when i was younger right you know my parents would tell me okay brush teeth so the first thing you get out of bed for me first step brush my teeth and then one day right i was uh camping with my ankle right ankle family and uh i saw that so my uncle who didn't brush teeth right away he started to eat breakfast i'm like you didn't brush your teeth because i was like five year old right he's like yeah i'm gonna so he told me oh you know what i'm going to uh eat breakfast and then brush my teeth so i make sure there's no debris in my mouth i'm like wow that makes sense so ever since then you know i i had this association with okay what comes first what comes second the sequence is very important to me so if the sequence and order of things is very important to you my work will make a lot of sense because you think about oh you know what if these guys had a better natural fascial foundation and then they lifted weights and their body is able to tolerate that they reach the top versus somebody who tells you you know what these guys they just lifted weight all their lives and that's why they're strong that's why they jump high and you try to do that and yes at one point you're going to reach that weight level right you're gonna lift 400 pounds but guess what your vertical don't increase you know what's up because your mild fascial connection was never the same